The Nigerian authorities have finally given reasons for the perceived fuel scarcity in parts of the country. What are they saying and what should Nigerians make of it? Also, university lecturers in Nigeria are threatening to go on strike again. As they say, the federal government has refused to honor its agreement with them. We'll take a look at this situation with an education expert. We also have analysis of the headlines uh, in today's national dailies. These and more ahead on The Breakfast. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's going to be a great, you know, beautiful morning right here. Two hours of amazing conversation. I am Messi Boko. It's good to and be I, on your screen this morning. Yes, indeed. Mercy. And now, Kofi Bartels, it's good to have you um, be beside you today. Uh, I always <laughs> say it's never the same without you. You're glowing. Mercy. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. The rest of us are, you know, running around the no, place looking for petrol. True. You know, that's not true. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, um, uh, we will be having a fantastic conversation this morning on The Breakfast, but let's uh, begin by placing our fingers on the pulse of the country. What are Nigerians talking about? What are they interested in? Um, and we call this our trending segment right here on The Breakfast. Um, let's start with uh, the House of Representatives um, uh, passing uh, or going through a second reading of uh, a bill to um, raise academic qualification of political aspirants. It's um, been a, a very, very um, uh, touchy subject, especially with the presidency. Um, uh, going back to the 2015 uh, elections, and uh, uh, we do know the history. Do I need to go into the, the do, I, do I know? No, okay. you, you, I All mean, right. you have so, a So right. anyway, the, the particular um, uh, representative who um, is the sponsor of this bill is uh, Representative Adewumi Ona Nuga of the Upper Progressives Congress in Ogun State. Now, this is a bill seeking the upward review of the required education qualifications for elective offices in Nigeria. Um, and of course, passing second reading of the House of Representatives it basically means that it's uh, almost a, a done deal. Um, she, she, she made a statement which was, was put out on Twitter yesterday, and, and uh, some persons were responding to this. She said, you know, why should, um, if Nigerian students graduates need to have the NY, or Nigerian is Nigerians need to have the NYSE qualification um, to be able to get aspire jobs. to get jobs, yeah, mm -hmm. to qualify to get jobs, why should the highest office in the land have YEC certificate as a requirement? And you know, the, the, no, comments, no, no. Came, the comments came pouring in. <laughs> very valid argument, if you ask me. Very, very valid. And you know that with all of that, because if you look at it at the end of the day, the office of the president is not, or the, you know, being a governor of a state is not a joke. As much as a lot of persons have argued that having a qualification, I mean, having a PhD, a BSc, and all of that does not necessarily translate to becoming a good president, of having good policies and what have you. But I, I think that that argument, I, I don't want to stay with that. Yes, it might, it, it is, but it also, um, let's look at it. Because at the end of the day, you come from the standpoint of having to get a job. School set. School, no, school no, no, set. No, 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 I'm just saying, yeah, that's school oh, set. Yeah. But we, we, you know, looking at the comparison that was actually put out, mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. totally unfair. Oh, oh, the comparison is unfair. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm I, saying I, that the comparison, by, by, when by, I say by, unfair, by, I mean by that. No, by the, by I, the honorable I, member of the House of Representatives, that we're talking about. When I say unfair, yeah. if, you, yeah. if you look at the the reality, the fact that those who are actually seeking for mm -hmm. a job, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. if you need a job, you have to, mm -hmm. you know, get that qualification mm -hmm. properly without the NYC. No, what I'm saying is this, if That's, you look I, at I want, it... I want to be sure, on behalf of Nigerians, to be sure what you're saying. No, so you wait for me to just get to the point. Wait, wait. Now, my point is yes. this. It is very, very... It's a valid point that has been raised. It's valid. That's number one. Okay. And then if you look at the disparity uh -huh. in the comparison, because the comparison allows you to see, you know, the loopholes, it's mm -hmm. totally unfair. That's the, what the, I mean. The, the comparison unfair in the sense is that unfair 
in no, the sense that yes yes i'm not saying that the comparison is unfair mm -hmm. i am saying that when you look at the disparity the disparity in the comparison which okay. the comparison has you know brought to mm -hmm. our no it just shows you that it's totally unfair that oh, that's I get what you i mean now. i get you so now. i mean that you sorry know, mercy you know we always you always attack attacking me so i i'm not I will naturally I <laughs> <laughs> so 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 um, you are saying that that it's unfair the situation Yes, if okay, you look at the okay. reality, it's unfair that right. you have, uh, you know, a, mm -hmm. so you want to become a president and all you need is a school set and then you're looking for a job. Do you need to have all of, you need to have 30 I years see. experience in the job. You need to have 25. When did you graduate out of school? So, so yes, so, it's a valid argument. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that that has been put out, number okay. one. But you also know that some school of thoughts, the argument is already ongoing. And some people are saying that being a uh, Having a BSc, I mean, upping the qualification does not necessarily mean that you would become a president. I mean, a good president or policies that would be chunked out would actually benefit Nigerians. But I, I think that that should not. Um, yes, I understand that it might not be just be a requirement for you. It's, it doesn't necessarily translate into you becoming a, a fantastic governor. We have seen several professors who we don't understand what they are professing, professors of education. Mm. So you have a governor who is a professor, you have mm. a deputy governor mm -hmm. who is a professor, yeah. and then you look at the state that they're governing, there's nothing to profess about. So you ask yourself, you, you, what exactly are you professing? It's a great so, point. But if you want to go yes. you know, with that kind of logic and yes. the argument, mm -hmm. then we will constantly just allow... So, so, so um, Mercy, this is what I think. I, I mean, don't know, you, you've like said it all that we've had, school. and um, I'm just looking at some comments, you know, how people have been reacting to... Um, what 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 was said because so some of the papers put out uh, the accounts you know the, the conversations online put out the quote of this representative you know saying if uh, graduates or Nigerian young Nigerians have to have the NYC um, uh, a certificate uh, as a requirement prerequisite to being employed in the country why should the highest office in land just require a school certificate don't you think mm. so but 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 the thing about it is that um. Uh, 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 yes, indeed, you've, you've made a fantastic point that you have in some situations people who are uh, so-called technocrats um, who are elected into positions in the country, these political positions, and they do not deliver. You know, we have people who've gone to school, who've read law, who've gone to law school, who've graduated from law school, are lawyers, some are SANs, you know, maybe become you know, governors. and you don't see anything spectacular about it. You have people who are said to be professors and they are, um, are, become, are, are, being, are becoming the worst governors in their state's history. You know, professors, professor for what? You know, call the prof, 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 prof. What are you? The one that came out was not called prof. You know, did, did more than you. Yours is, is, is going down. You know, I'm, I'm not attacking anyone in particular. I mean, so don't look at me like that. But, but, but um, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. It, it, it's, it's not... Uh, given that if you have a doctorate, or a pro but but I think that the thing is that um, there should be a level playing ground for, I mean, it, it, the opportunities that and the demands that are being made by by the job market on on Nigerian youth, you know, is not the same thing. But 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 this is what I like to see. That that comparison is a, is an emotional comparison, you know, and then um, when you bring emotions into Argument sometimes logic flies out the window, you know. So it, it's 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 saying that Nigerians, uh, you know, graduates are being on a, young Nigerians, job seekers are being asked to complete the NYC before they can be given jobs. Why would the highest office in land? It, it's an emotional statement that can evoke um, the passion and reaction of Nigerians, like we're seeing online. But but we need to realize that performing a job, all right, and applying for a job is different from. Um, uh, running for office, you know, those are two different things, and and it's also important to make sure that um, everyone has a fair shot at at, at 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 occupying political office, even if you have not gone to university. But people say we want you to lead us because we think that you are the right person for this local government area to be chairman. You know what they are going through. You can, you, can, you can run for it. It should not be. So that's the idea, I'm sure, behind those who frame the constitution, that no one should be left behind. You understand? And, and of course, if you are there as a school set holder, who says you can't have advisors with PhDs and those uh, professorships and all that? You know, so 
uh, this this is an emotional argument that may threaten to throw logic out the window. Let's move on. We have more training topics to look at. Mercy. Um, a Catholic Archbishop uh, or Catholic yeah, Archbishop. This is um, uh, a quite a highly placed uh, 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 clergyman because if you look at the 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 episcopacy of things, you look at the priests, you know, uh, the bishops, and then the archbishop. It means that he is in charge of um, an archdiocese, you know. Um, so this is, but but okay. I think I think we need to make it clear. It's not actually uh, he is a priest in charge of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church uh, somewhere in Ikorodu, Lagos. So the Catholic Archbishop was the one who suspended him. So he's mm -hmm. not a Catholic Archbishop, um, but the Catholic Archbishop is the one who suspended him. Um, what did the priest do? He was said to have um, banned Igbo songs in his parish, and that's something I've never heard of before. Um, it's quite interesting because the southeastern part of the country. Um, is predominantly Catholic. If you go to the five Igbo states, the Catholic faith dominates the Southeast. And, and, and most of the priests come from there, naturally, you know. Um, so so it it's, was interesting for me when I saw um, that story. And a lot of people also reacted to it, you know, um, asking why. Reverend Father James Anelu, um, he has been said to be known to chastise Choruses who sing Igbo songs where and he's officiating mass. As you can hear from the name, he probably comes from uh, that part of the country, you know. So whenever he's officiating mass, you know, in any part of the south, south, or southwest, he doesn't want to hear Igbo songs. Um, the reason he gives, again, this is very important because before you throw anything at this man, you have to understand where it's coming from. The reason he gives at this mass is, according to the reports, is that. Um, it was not the only one who attend Catholic churches. You understand, and the excesses of Igbos must be contained. You know, so 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 the 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 pre the predomination or the domination of the Catholic faith in Nigeria by those from southeastern states, okay, means that if you go to other Catholic churches around the country, you most likely will see them there. So no, he, no, so okay, he, so he, he, his thought is that um, we need to be careful because. Despite the fact that you are in the majority, we have people who are in this church, in Yoruba land, in the Niger Delta, for instance, who are not Igbos. So seeing songs that they can understand, so I say. So, so usually, uh, when this ha actually happens, it's possible that he, his intentions were not, I mean, uh, mm. probably he had good intentions mm. or he had a message to actually communicate. But quite very strange for a lot of people, and at this time, and that's why we constantly say you hear the call that uh, we are being governed in different, you know, in segments. The country okay. as Nigeria, okay. so you have different segments. And, you know, religion is big on us. Uh, religion is very big on us. A lot of people have attributed a lot of the issues that we're facing with in this country to the issue of religion. And one would want to say, so for whatever intentions like that it like was, yesterday, yeah. what, what, whatever intention that it was, mm -hmm. I'm sure that it wasn't communicated properly. So yes, if you want to agree with me, uh, I have been in the, in the church scene, you know, as much Cap as Catholic yourself. Church? So you're a Christian. So you probably okay, say, okay. yes, you've been in church scene for a while. So you're in church, you could be in the church. I mean, I go to church and then people are singing all sorts of songs mm -hmm. from different tribes. Mm -hmm. And no mm -hmm. one has actually banned that. Mm -hmm. Usually because with technology, so people can actually be carried along. What you have is that you have people projecting the songs on the screen. Mm -hmm. And prior to this time, if you have the choir or the chorister or the lead uh, singer, mm -hmm. they come out to begin to teach the song. I mean, just before they get into the performance of the song in full. So they just have you, they take you through interpretation of the song, understanding that you have different persons from different tribes. So I, we would also expect that because you cannot take out the fact that you have religious organization, be it, uh, you know, the Muslim community, what I have, the church Christian and what have you, the Buddhists and the Judas, the traditionalists, all of these persons are very vital in, you know, the development, nation building. And we need to be very sensitive. It's a sensitive time, a time where you have some quotas agitating and asking that we want to go away. And what's the essence of wanting to go their way? So you, you want to expect that every religious leader, every traditional including the native doctor should be very um, very informed and aware of what the things that are going on because people so, are saying so, we're, we're sorry not carried out no, sorry no, 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 I'm sorry. we have shown on the screen uh, the statement put out by the Catholic Archdiocese of Lagos um, it says disclaimer this is dated 7th February by the way it has been brought to a notice that Reverend Father James Anelo the priest in charge of Holy Trinity 
Catholic Church, uh, Ikordu, made some completely unacceptable comments about Igbo songs being sung in the church and on savory remarks that do not represent the Catholic uh, Church's patriotism on common brotherhood of peoples of all tribes and religions. For this reason, he has been asked to proceed on indefinite leave of absence to give an opportunity for a thorough investigation of all matters relating to his ministry in the parish. The leave of absence takes effect from Tuesday, 8th February 2022 to further notice. We therefore urge all Catholic faithful to hold on to the faith and continue our worship uh, uh, of God as one big family united in love and not separated by language, culture, or race. So, so I, I just had to read that so people understand. And sorry, I interrupted you, mercy. But I have a question for you. Yeah, do you think that this this priest um, meant to meant to separate people by language, culture, or race? So, or you he know, meant I... to make it more inclusive. So the the thought I had was is that it is. Um, his intentions probably might be very right, but we're saying that everybody needs to understand that we're in a very, very sensitive path, we're in a very sensitive time in the country. And so be it a, a religious leader, you need to also understand, because we can't take out the fact that we're big on religion. There are different kind of okay. uh, so, practices so, so, and religion. So you're, you're saying and what it's we're expecting times. is what we're actually expecting times. is that everybody should be very sensitive. Mm. His intentions probably would have been right, but we're saying that, like for me, and I'm sure that he probably might not just be, um, you know, ignorant of this fact that you have a lot of, you know, churches and things are done differently. He didn't really come out right at this point in time where you mm. have um, some persons feeling left out. Let's be very realistic. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that you have a, a, at this point in time where you have some persons who feel that they have been marginalized over time. And if you look at it, so it would just be, is, it, it would is, just is, be. Is, is this a, okay, so this is it here. Sorry to interrupt you, Mercy. You're saying some people are marginalized over time, right? Is this a situation of people being marginalized? Okay, no, no, so, so I'm actually, can you just allow me along with my thoughts? My okay, point okay, here okay, is this. Okay. It is a sensitive time. Intentions might just be right. But you also need to understand before you involve. Now, if you look at a lot of churches, mm -hmm. like I was, I was trying to mention, that you have churches who have, you know, devised means to carry everybody along. So you have screens where you can project the songs. And you also have the fact that the chorus they they could actually... In, in that church? Yeah, yes, no, what I'm saying is we need to find a way to understand. It is a sensitive time. And for you as a priest to come out to say, for whatever reason, the intentions might be right, but the time you need to understand. You also need to find okay. a way to okay. communicate. So, 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 I, so we I, do, we do you, not you, get to just, a point where we actually me. get the country, you, you know, you, distorted. You, you, and, you, you know, constantly said, put all of that yes, confusion you, you, you in. You said it's a sensitive, sensitive time. Um... I, I do not know if, if, if that, that sensitivity comes into play in, in the church. You know, it does. Because you know, I, like I'm, I'm, I mentioned, can I, can I, can the sensitivity I, can I, can I actually learn? comes in, you know, in play in church because mm -hmm. you cannot take out, we're big on religion, and you can't take that out from us. And we're saying that in developing the nation, religion has a place. So you have different religion. You also have the traditionalists. They cannot be left out. They have a lot of followings. And so we need to be very, very sensitive with all of this. Okay, like so, I mentioned, so, so, his so intentions this is, this might probably be right, make, um, but he needs to also understand. Like um, I'm saying, so people go to churches and learn and emulate. You see what is going on. A lot of things are happening in different churches is not because they actually originated. They started with all of those thoughts. Okay, so they probably would have gone to see it from another parish, parish and actually imbibe it and then they practice it. So if you feel that, oh, the Igbos cannot constantly have a song uh, because you have all the tribes, why don't you have a situation where, because I've been to churches where they sing different songs from Delta, from Aquaibon, from different parts, minority, majority and all of that. So, so you have all of that. So why don't you find a way where people can actually have a balance? And like I say, it happens in different churches that I have seen, which has not become a problem. So you have the songs being projected on the screen. And then you have the choir, whatever, take them through some kind of schooling. And then they understand before it's been done. So they sing all kind of songs. So for me, his intentions might just be right. He doesn't mean any harm. But you know, because we're in a very sensitive time, where some people, especially the Igbos, the southeastern part of the country, Country feels marginalized. They haven't been taken along in a very. They feel like, oh, we have been left out. We haven't been given. We don't feel belong. They feel, and then you know, you you put out that statement. It will be taken out of context, and that's why it's important that everybody understands that we have a role to play in nation building. Fantastic. Uh, 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 the, yesterday we had a guest on the uh, um, on the program, and uh, she, uh, Christine Umo Umo Kereka, um, who who said that the. Um, uh, she tried to get her books you know she's an author of a book on 
decadence in Nigerian society, try to get the books into the country. And she said she also attached um, two phones to copies of the book she was sending to Nigeria from, uh, uh, from Canada. And um, she claimed that uh, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency had confiscated the phones um, and she tried to get to find out why the phones were confiscated. And the claims, or claim was that they um, were trying to use that to get money from her. And of course, as um, a responsible and um, progressive, proactive uh, media organization, um, Plus TV Africa went to, you know, to the NDA to find out what happened. But we'll play a clip and uh, just watch this, and when we come back, we'll talk some more. Brought to the NDLA office today by the DHS. This can be cross checked. This thing, I mean, of, I mean, it's, um, in, in this age and time of technology, she should be able to track where her consignment is. And unfortunately, what she was what she was saying on here, which is also very ridiculous and unfortunate, she was making an allegation that she herself has no, I mean, has not been able to establish. She was saying that. Um, they said that even in, even in your broadcast, you also said that um, Endeli planted drugs in her in her business. That did not come up. That has that that is never part of the entire transaction. We we're just having the first contact with that particular con uh, that particular consignment today, and that has been processed and released since. Because I know the process a lot. Quite uh, as I spoke, I mean, as I told um, like I told one of I mean your producer before. Quite a number of people, when they don't get their um, consignments released within 28 hours, I mean, within 24 hours or 48 hours, they start putting pressure on NDLA, not even knowing that the agency is, ever, is yet to have to see the particular consignment. I have treated a number of cases like this. So people should learn to actually find out information, cross-check before they come on here to make them. Um, Surus allegations. Okay, so in this particular case, there is no truth in it at all. The process is this: this thing came through a courier service. The courier service works with the NDLA, especially for consignments that they don't know the content. They provide, they present this thing to the agency, and the agency go through it, scan it, and when they are sure that there is nothing um, incriminating or no drug in it. And they return it back to the uh, to the to to the courier service for um, delivery to the owners. So, like I said, that particular consignment has the first contact with NDLA today. So, whoever she had spoken with in DHL has nothing to do with the NDLA. So, she couldn't have been making um, allegations based on her conversation with anybody in DHL. And like I said, in this age and time. She has a responsibility to check the tra I mean, through the tracking number, where the tracking number will show where her consignment is at any particular point in time. Quite interesting. Uh, of course, um, we uh, listened to the reaction of the spokesman for the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Mr. Femi Baba Femi. He earlier spoke to Plus TV News. And um, Mercy, this is quite interesting. Um, both of us were here yesterday and listened to uh, the lady who expressed some concern uh, about her items. And um, if, if, if it is a situation that, uh, or it is a situation that she did not, um, the items were not with the NDLA, how did she know it was with the NDLEA? You know, if at the time she was talking, the items were not with the NDLEA, then how did she know it was with the NDLEA? You know, you know there were some issues. The truth is, is, usually when you have an accusation or an allegation being made, there will always be a response. And I haven't, I haven't you know, since I was born, I'm getting old, I haven't really seen any agency in Nigeria, including the government, that has actually said, yes, these happen, owning up to it and saying, oh, yes, this is what the case is. So usually it's a case of having, you know, a public image, a public relations. I mean, that's what you're talking about. So you have to put a good image. I'm not saying that that's the case, but there's a possibility. I mean, so we're looking at the fact that, yes, an accusation was made. Should there be a response? 
response? Yes, there should be a response. What should be it? Um, so anything can hap actually happen, especially when you're not there to, you know, verify all of the issues that were raised from both parties. So yes, it's a good thing that uh, the NDLE has actually responded and uh, we know what it is. The, one of the things that uh, was mentioned is the fact that there are processes. Now, don't forget the time that was also mentioned in the course of all of this. She mentioned, you know, a time saying, yes, I sent this out at a particular time and I've been told that it's in the court study of the NDLE. Uh, that's because I've been also told that I need to sort them out before it can be given out. So, um, <laughs> You know, it is what it is. You have to have a response. You have to have a case and somebody has to respond. Whether or not um, the, the truth now depends on who finds out exactly what the truth is. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I mean, the, the, the agency is simply doing its job. You know, if, if it's a case of uh, um, the phones or the items, the consignment going into Nigeria and they've been here for maybe 48 hours, you know, um, if, if there's nothing to, to, to be concerned about or there's nothing incriminating in them. And I think um, uh, Mrs. Amor Kereka um, doesn't have anything to fear. Uh, the agencies of government must be allowed to do their job. Uh, we know that people import you know, vehicles into this country. We've had reports, you know, it's on record. People import vehicles into this country and in those vehicles um, are concealed drugs, hard drugs, cocaine and stuff. Uh, people import vehicles into this country and in those vehicles are concealed weapons, high caliber weapons. It's on record. Um, so I if the agency has to do its job by saying, well, take a look at items that are imported into Nigeria, uh, I don't think it might, they will be able to look at everything, but uh, and just to be sure that there is nothing you know, illegal here, there's, there's no problem. They should just do their job. And I don't think they need to start telling us stories you know, about about this. So we're doing our job, we're going to release a thing to the woman, and then I think that's it. That's it, basically. Well, that's it on Top Trending. Oh, we take a break right now. When we return, we will be looking at the papers and national dailies, as always, would have a guest join the conversation. Please stick around. <laughs>